So, uh, hey everyone, my name is Justin Ress. I'm a professional swimmer. Uh, I've turned into recently a huge gamer. I'm a part-time streamer. I'm just going to talk about my experience with gaming when I was growing up, how I got into esports, how I turned into a serious gamer, and how I kind of balanced that with swimming uh, professionally. And then after that, I'll go more specifically about the possibilities of esports and what the future might hold for that and everything that goes on, not just obviously being a professional gamer, but what goes on behind the scenes of those esports events that are turning into just massive, massive events. Uh, there's a lot of stuff behind the scenes and a lot of stuff that uh, you can have a career in. After that, this is a pretty general term, building a brand, but uh, in the in the gaming industry, really the entertainment industry as a whole, always having a brand will take you a, a long way in terms of what you can do. So let's jump right into it. Uh, who am I? I'm United States swimmer three-time NCAA champion, uh, US Open record holder. I have turned into an avid gamer and I'm an international swim league champion for the California Condors. So my first console, like in this picture before, was the Nintendo GameCube and the PlayStation 2. I got the GameCube when I was about six years old and I got the PlayStation 2 when I was probably seven or eight. When I moved to middle school and high school, I don't even remember when the Xbox 360 came out, but I had an Xbox 360. That's when I really started getting into uh, Call of Duty. And then when I got to college, that's kind of where gaming turned into something very serious for me. I bought my first PC. It was a pre-built. And eventually, uh, a few years later, I it turned into me building my own PC, which means you buy all the parts separately and you put them all together yourself. As uh, esports started developing and the games like Fortnite came out and streamers like Ninja came and just took, took gaming to a whole nother level, it, it really uh, just evolved esports into something with a with a huge potential in the future. So I really started getting into gaming when uh, Fortnite got big. A lot of people were streaming and stuff like that. The explosion of esports started probably around 2016 or 2017, right when uh, Fortnite was starting getting really popular. Of course, esports can go back all the way to, to 20, uh, 2002 or 2003. People like Ninja started building huge brands in, in the Fortnite community. He would uh, oftentimes average 30, 40, 50,000 viewers at a time playing Fortnite, which is insane to look at. Um, and because of people like Ninja, uh, you had uh, these events, like the first Fortnite World Cup held at Arthur Ashe Stadium in uh, New York, I believe. Um, as you can see, that's a pretty full stadium, 23,000 people. And uh, the, the champion of that event uh, in particular actually walked away with like $3 million, I want to say, which is uh, mind blowing for gaming, considering five years ago, 10 years ago, professional esports players had to get another job in order to support themselves. My favorite uh, league, the Call of Duty League, had a launch weekend in 2020 at the Minneapolis Armory with a capacity of 8,400. And you see the production going on everywhere, the lights, the fire, the fans, and there's, there's a bunch of moving parts that go beyond just the players. So that's kind of uh, what what we're talking about when we say esports management. You know what goes what goes on beyond behind the scenes. You know how do we get the players there? How do we get the fans there? How do we market this? Right? How do we put on a show? How do we make it enjoyable for people? You know what is the what does the NFL and the NBA do uh, that makes them successful? You know they get fans to go there. That's basically where esports is starting to develop right now into uh, professional leagues, and they're beginning to franchise and stuff like that. They have uh, teams hosted in, in, in separate cities, like an NFL, you have like Carolina Panthers or the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So um, these teams uh, compete together uh, against each other, just like any other uh, league like NFL or NBA would. Now uh, I've introduced you to esports, what esports is. Uh, I can go more into the possibilities of, of esports. You know, what can you do with this? What, what are all the moving parts behind esports? How can you actually have a career why should you even worry about you know studying esports management in college stuff like that behind the scenes you know what goes on what, what are all these lights what are all these introductions to the players what what is that right uh, you know you have video producers obviously not only can they you know just film the event like uh, any other event would but they do intros for the players you know when you see nfl players or a lot of colleges will do this when the football team's going out they have a little uh, hype video that a player does on, on on the screen and you know they're trying to get the crowd pumped trying to get the crowd to make noise that's video production right so going beyond that setting up and managing equipment 
This is something that I enjoy personally a lot because I've started building PCs, managing PCs, managing the software on PCs, getting the game set up on them. And this requires not only a lot of money, but a lot of time. Think about if you did a, a major or a minor in computer science or electrical engineering uh, in conjunction with esports management. You know, they need um, hardware experts on staff there in case one of the, you know, uh, computers or consoles breaks in the middle of the event. So setting up equipment further, more uh, more in depth would just be like any other production, right? You have cameras, you have lights, you have fancy screens, uh, marketing and casting. This is what makes esports so different, not so different, but more different than other sports out there. Casting is in esports is probably the most crucial role to reaching a broader audience. Casting, marketing, and all goes hand in hand. Uh, being a caster takes a lot of work. Being able to talk on the fly and be comfortable with 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 what you're saying, knowing all the all the players, knowing what's happening in the game, being able to describe the game to people who don't know what's going on takes a lot of work. And getting sponsorship to fund these events goes along with marketing as well, right? Uh, the peak of uh, viewership at esports events sometimes reaches millions now. My my favorite two casters actually for the Call of Duty League, uh, Joe Merck De Luca and Clint Maven Evans. And what the quotations in the middle is is kind of their what's called a gamer tag. So these guys build brands so well that they're actually known for their gamer tags rather than their real names, which is why branding and building a brand is so important for this industry to get far. And speaking of branding, it's not just at a corporate level, right? It's, it's individual too like my two favorite casters right there. So um, not only does the league itself have to have to market and brand itself, but the individuals within the market can help that brand really explode based off what they do. And a bigger brand equals more opportunities at the individual level, right? So th these two casters, if they're not, if they don't have these, these huge brands, maybe they don't get the job, you know, maybe it goes to somebody else. You know, in an in esports uh, movement or just any business in general, right? If, if you have more followers, more following, uh, more people enjoy your presence more basically, then you have more opportunities, right? It's all about connections and stuff like that. Now we're going to talk more specifically about building a brand, what exactly that entails, how to do it and how people have mastered doing it. Like, like I mentioned earlier, Ninja. So um, what do you want your brand to be, right? Do you want to be known purely as a gamer? Do you want to be known more as an influencer or do you want to be someone like a caster who commentates uh, these esports games, right? Do you want to have a large brand? Do you want to be more behind the scenes? What, what do you want from your brand, right? And that's where branching out is extremely important, right? Uh, don't cater to only one audience. If I was only catering to, to swimmers, right? If I only wanted to reach out to swimmers, I'm limiting my outreach significantly. You know, right now, if I'm trying to trying to get gamers to follow me, if I try to get, let's say I'm also passionate about soccer, for example, if I want soccer fans to also follow me, that's just going to increase my potential to build my brand, right? And then on top of that, what are you passionate about? You know, just because I'm a swimmer doesn't mean I can't be passionate about gaming and try to get into the gaming community as well. Like myself, maybe you're in a career that has a limit based on if you're an athlete, your, your physique, your physical abilities have a limit to them, right? You get old, you can't do it anymore. What am I going to do after I'm done swimming? So that's why reaching out and building a brand into other um, areas, other aspects of your life is very important, right? And now specifically Ninja. Uh, Tyler Tyler Blevins, his real name, his uh, gamer tag is Ninja. He started off playing uh, playing Fortnite back in, I want to say 2017 when Fortnite was in its beginning stages. Him and Fortnite, I'd say, are the two most influential sources for the explosion of esports and gaming in general. And he's built, he built it, he started building it out further than just gaming, right? He crossed over to Red Bull, for example, in the bottom left. He makes millions per month because of all his endorsements that are not just specifically gaming. And he's built his brand so far to the point where he's not just a gamer anymore. His only job is not just streaming video games. He is an influencer now. You know, he has millions of followers on, on Twitter, millions of followers on Instagram. And with that kind of brand, he can take his career really anywhere he wants, right? The more varied your brand is, the more uh, chances you're going to have at doing what you want uh, beyond what you're currently doing, right? If you look in the top left at this at this little uh, image uh, graphic that's here, there's a Twitter user that has almost 24,000 followers now simply by designing these statistic cards, which um, you know no one else has done before, but it's really cool. And 
you know, you have cards like these in baseball and soccer and, and other sports like that. So he figured, why can't I do this in esports as well? Right. So he took charge of that. He built, he made these himself. Um, and he built a brand outside of the norm. Uh, and that that's allowed him to build a brand more and who knows where that could lead into, into the future, right? Maybe the league hires him to do statistics and graphics and stuff like that. So all these things behind the scenes that, that lead up to what goes into an esports event, uh, extremely important. Um, so that's kind of what you need to be thinking about if you ever consider, you know, doing an, e an esports management, uh, major or anything like that. It's just so important to know that your brand doesn't have to be one thing, right? You can make it anything you want. And the more connections you have, the better in the long term it's going to be. So I, I think that's that's basically it. Maybe you took something out of it that you didn't know before. Thanks again to Salem. 